Okay. We're glad you braved the, the weather out there, and uh, we hope you feel at home here at Trinity. I have a, a few announcements. Um, one you probably saw in the bulletin or up on the screens before the service. Um, our school, Illinois Lutheran Schools, has uh, called Seth Herman uh, to be the um, dean of students. He has declined or returned that call. However, the individual, Jeff Falk, that we called for our grade school principal position has accepted the calling. He's asked for this letter to be read. Dear members of the Illinois Lutheran School family, over the past several weeks, I have been given the opportunity to evaluate my ministry gifts, the work I've been called to carry out as shepherd of, at Shepherd of the Valley, and the opportunities to serve you in Crete. I have had many good conversations with the people I currently serve with and have valued their analysis of my gifts and how they might best be used. I've received insights about the work being carried out at ILS from your leaders, teachers, and other contexts. I've had conversations with my family, and most importantly, spent time in prayer considering the two calls before me. After prayerful consideration, I've been led to accept the call you have extended me to serve as principal of your pre-K through sixth grade campus at Illinois Lutheran Schools. I look forward to this time of transition and preparing to be with you in all in full-time service. I ask for your continued prayers for God's people here at Shepherd of the Valley as the ministry is evaluated and the process for finding a principal is carried out. May God bless us all as we continue sharing the life-saving gospel with his little lambs for the rest of the school year. Blessings in Jesus, Principal Jeffrey Falk. So we certainly thank God for, for that answer. We still have a few positions open, and tomorrow night our school board will be issuing calls for the dean of students at the high school as well as the English and drama position and then math position as well. So keep the board in your prayers as they extend those calls and certainly keep the individuals um, that receive the calls in your prayers. And in that light, also keep Pastor Bentz in your prayers as he has received a divine call to be pastor at another Trinity Lutheran in Belle Plaine, Minnesota. And he's more than willing to and actually welcoming wants any input or any thoughts that you have regarding um, his call here as well as the new one he has. Also a reminder, not this week Wednesday, but next week Wednesday, Wednesday, um, Valentine's Day, February 14th, is also, also Ash Wednesday. It's the beginning of the Lenten season. And so we will have these Wednesday services, 3.30 in the afternoon, right after school gets out, and that's repeated at 7 in the evening. Um, and there's a meal in between. Certainly a great time for us to focus on Jesus. And actually the theme for these services is only Jesus. So um, look forward to, um, to uh, worshiping with you as we focus on Christ and his suffering for our sins and for our salvation. Also, um, two other things regarding uh, Illinois Lutheran Schools. We are hosting the Regional Band Festival. We have 80 students from around the United States. They're coming here to Crete, and we do need help hosting them. It's the, the weekend, I think it's uh, March 8th, 9th, and 10th. Um, if you can help out hosting one, two, or, or more students, that would be greatly appreciated. Talk to Liz Kuschel if you can. And then also, a school is hosting a teacher's conference at the end of February, and we need desserts and snacks and things like that. So uh, if you can do that, um, give those things, that would be great. More information about all that is in the service folder. I think that's all for the announcements. Today, um, it's a rather interesting picture you have on the, on the front of the cover of the worship folder. It is uh, of that miracle that's recorded in the Bible of Jesus healing this paralytical man that there was lowered in front of him on, on this mat, this, this structure. That's actually um, the sermon text for today. We're going to look at this miracle, and by doing that, we're going to see that, that Jesus is true God, and he is for us. With that in mind, let's begin today with a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you rule over all things. For us. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ for us. We thank you that you've given us this congregation to, to be there for us. Lord, bless us here this morning as we worship and, and we praise you, as, as we hear your word. 
that we may marvel once again all that you have done for us. And so, Lord, when we leave today, may we do all that we do for you. In your name we pray. Amen. The entire order of worship is in the service folder. It's also on the screens. You can use whichever one you want. Our first song, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Please stand for worship. We're gathered here this morning to worship our holy and triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we're here standing before our holy God, let us join humbly in confessing our sins. Lord God, sometimes I feel alone. Sometimes I don't see you at work in my life and so I think you aren't there. Forgive me for the times that I forget your power, your love, and your presence. Forgive me for the times that I have sinned with my own thoughts, my own words, my own actions. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Amen. My friends in Christ, where on the one hand, we have sinned in our thoughts, our words, and our actions, Jesus never did. He led a perfect life in thought, in word, and in deed. And it was that perfect life then that Jesus laid down as a sacrifice, a sacrifice not for anything he did wrong, for he did nothing wrong but a sacrifice instead for everything we have done wrong. Because of what Christ did on that cross, I get to tell you, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please be seated. Our first scripture reading for today is from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 18 through 25. Here, God is speaking through the prophet, and he says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now, it springs up, do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Yet, you have not called upon me, O Jacob. You have not wearied yourselves for me, O Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with grain offerings, nor wearied you with demands for incense. You have not bought any fragrant calmness for me, or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins, and wearied me with your offenses. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions, for my own sake, and remembers your sins no more. This is God's word. The next reading is from the Gospel of Mark. It's chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This will also be the sermon text for today, and this is that account of Jesus healing that paralytic man. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered there that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and digging, after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, 
your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join in singing the song, Good Shepherd of My Soul. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So I mentioned before we're, we're going to look at this reading from Mark chapter 2. It's this miracle of Jesus healing this paralytic man brought before him. As we look at this, it's, it's, you see that there's a lot of different people, a lot of different groups, and, and all of them were going to Jesus. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to go to Jesus. And as we look at this account from Mark chapter 2, one thing right away. You see this group, that this crowd that came to Jesus, and they liked what they heard. Mark chapter 2 tells us, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Now, probably you heard that, that Jesus grew up in the town of Nazareth. And he did go and, and preach the good news to the people of his hometown, but they rejected him. And so ultimately, Jesus ended up making Capernaum basically his new hometown. And, and he came back and... The people there were not like in Nazareth. 
They did not reject him, just the opposite. They, they gathered in large crowds because they liked what they heard. They wanted to hear him again and again. Well, among those that liked what they heard, uh, among those that, that came were these, these five guys. Now, you can kind of imagine the, the picture here. You know, when, when people gather around a celebrity today, they just hoard around him. And, and, well, it was kind of like that with Jesus. Except people didn't go to Jesus to have their photo taken with him or have him sign something. They came because they wanted to hear him. Well, the crowd beat them to it. But these five guys also came. Five guys that came with a need. Well, actually, technically, it's one of them that had a need, but... They were such a close group that when one of them had a need, they all did. This is what Mark tells us. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus. And after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. It's pretty clear. These friends, they were determined. There's this large crowd gathered there. They couldn't get, Jesus, uh, get anywhere close to Jesus. And, and even if there, there are people there that, that wanted to move out of the way for this paralytic, they probably couldn't. It was just that tight, that crowded. So instead, they, they went up on the roof and got Jesus, got him to Jesus by another way. So, j- just so you understand the setting and what exactly is going on, you kind of have to understand how houses were back in ancient times. Houses were not big; they were fairly small, and usually just one room, something like this. And it was very common on the outside of the house to have stairs going up to the roof because the roof basically was considered another room. They would use it for entertainment, for for parties. Um, During the summer months at night, they would often sleep up on the roof in the cool of the night. And during the day, they would dry food up there. They used it a lot. And so that roof had to be very sturdy to support all the activity up there. And it was designed that way. To give you an idea, here's the view from inside a house, and you can look up at the roof, and you see there's the big beams, and then there are smaller beams going the opposite way, and then on top of that, there would be clay pressed down and dried. Very firm, very stable for people to walk on top of. So you can maybe picture in your mind exactly the, the scene here. Jesus is, is, is speaking here, and there's... A lot of people everywhere. And then, then you hear this, this commotion above you, this, this loud sounds. And then little by little, you, you start seeing daylight through the roof and, and maybe debris and, and dust is falling down. And I mean, this didn't take just a few minutes. It's not like there's a trap door there. This had to have taken a while for them literally to dig through that roof. And as it's getting bigger and bigger, I don't know what the owner of the house thought, but these people are vandalizing his house. He couldn't do anything about it. The the crowd blocked his way. So eventually, they made the hole big enough to lower this, this stretcher that this paralyzed man was on right there in front of Jesus. Now, it was obvious what they were wanting Jesus to do. He was paralyzed. But there's actually a greater need than that. How did he become paralyzed? The Bible doesn't really tell us. But it is very clear that this paralyzed man had this huge weight of guilt on him. Maybe... He had just recently become paralyzed, and it was because he, he was fooling around with his friends and an accident happened. Maybe not only he was hurt, but maybe some others were hurt. Maybe 
this was a group of six. And now because of a quick, foolish act, there's only five. However, he became paralyzed. Whatever it was that he did or, or said, he felt this weight of guilt. And it was heavy. Now, how do I know that? What did Jesus say to him? Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, here's a little tip when you read the Bible, especially the gospel reading, the gospel accounts, the, the, the four biographies of Jesus in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Anytime you're, you're reading in one of them something that happened, it's always good to check the other gospels because often, not always, but often, the other accounts, the other biographies will be talking about the same thing. And there may be details in the other accounts that help you understand what you're reading. You see, each of the four Gospels, the biographies, are written from a different perspective. Uh, Matthew is uh, the biggest of them, and it's really written for the Jewish reader because there's a lot of Old Testament quotes in it. Mark, which we're looking at today. This is really on um, Peter's account because Mark and Peter were, were close uh, co-workers, and Mark really tends to, to write in a way that just focuses on, on the facts, on, on the action, not so much of the talking. Luke very, um, well, he's a doctor, so very technical. Um, John. John wrote his gospel decades after the other one. So there's a lot of, of accounts in the gospel of John the others don't have. He's filling in the gaps. So it's always good to check out the other accounts because you can learn something. And, and we have an example of that here today. It's just a little one. But it gives us another glimpse into what this paralytic is thinking. This is what the Gospel of Matthew tells us. Some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. What did Jesus say? Take heart, son. Guilt over what he had done was so heavy. Jesus said, don't worry. Your sins are forgiven. You see, Jesus, first, he met his greatest need, and that was forgiveness. That's what the crowd had come to hear, this, this news that, that God loved them, that, that there was forgiveness for what they had done. This man laying in front of Jesus physically couldn't do anything and spiritually couldn't either. And yet Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Now there's some people there that heard this. These um, teachers, these experts, and they did not like what they heard. They couldn't believe what they heard. Jesus said this man's sins were forgiven? This is what the Gospel of Mark tells us. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? That's what they were thinking. But before they even spoke that, Jesus responded. Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your man, and go and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. So, right now, we are in the season that's called Epiphany. Epiphany means to reveal or, or to show something. And right here, we see Jesus revealing, showing 
who he really is. Jesus is God in the flesh. I mean, he knew what these teachers were thinking. He knew what the paralytic was thinking, that this guilt he had on him. He knows all things. The big fancy term in catechism class we learned, that that's omniscience. He knows all things. And then he showed he had power. He healed this man right in front of them, proving he had the authority to forgive him. He has that power that the fancy term in catechism class is omnipotence, all-powerful. Jesus showed who he was. He is God. So, there are things, a few things then for, for us to think about here. First, where do you see yourself in this story? See, here's another tip also when you read the Bible. Is, is when you're reading an account, you really tr try to place yourself there. Think about what, what, what would they be thinking about? What would they be experiencing or, or going through? So, so where do you see yourself in this account? Do you relate um, with the paralytic? Maybe there is this, this weight of, of guilt over something you've said, something you've done. Maybe, and it hurt others. Maybe it hurt your spouse or your child or a co-worker. Maybe this guilt that you have makes you feel like you, you, you can't do anything. You, who are you to do something at church? People think you're the biggest hypocrite. Do you relate to that? Or do you relate more to, to this crowd, that the people that are there, listening, soaking in this, this forgiveness, this love of God, but, but in so doing, being very inward focused. And this is, this is your spot. This, this, is, this is yours. Anyone knew that they have to find their own way in? Or, or are you more like those friends? They would not be deterred by anything. They were bold. They, they vandalized that house. Are, are you so willing to help others, but, but maybe to a degree that you do so without asking and end up causing damage? Are you more like these teachers? Kind of skeptic. Always questioning things, wondering. And if that's you, I pray that you find the same answer that these teachers did. The answer is in Jesus. So, so where do you see yourself? Where, where do you connect with? That's one thing to ask. Another thing is what did Jesus do for each of them? He gave them what they needed. Not necessarily what they wanted, but what they needed. This paralytic. He needed that, that weight of guilt taken off, and Jesus forgave it. That, that crowd, they needed God's word. That's what he gave them. These friends needed their friend healed. Jesus did that. Even the skeptics had their answer in Jesus. He showed them who he really was. Jesus is God in the flesh. And he is for us. You know, those friends, they stopped at nothing. They would let nothing deter them from bringing their friend to Jesus. Jesus is kind of the same way. He let nothing get in the way from helping us. He didn't let the devil get in his way. He didn't let the, the religious or political leaders of the day get in his way. He stopped at nothing, even going so far as sacrificing his own life on that cross for us. You know, when Jesus told that, that paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven, the Greek word that's used here means sent away. 
As far as the east is from the west, so far has God sent away your sins from you. They are gone. You are forgiven. It doesn't matter how big of a weight of guilt we may have. It doesn't matter what we have done and, and how we have hurt others. It doesn't matter if we question. It doesn't matter if we're closed off and, and let others fend for themselves. It, it, none of that matters. As far as the east is from the west, that is how far he has removed our sins from us. You see, Jesus is true God. And he is for us. He's on our side. His love is for us. His forgiveness is for us. His word is for us. So, my friends, go to Jesus. Go to Jesus when you have that weight of guilt on your heart. Go to Jesus when, for, for the needs that you have. Go to Jesus to help the, the needs of, of your friends. Go to Jesus. And like those friends, bring others with you. Bring them to Jesus. Because Jesus, God in the flesh, is for us. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which transcends our human lives, guide and guard you until eternal life in heaven. Amen. Please join with me in confessing our faith. We use the Nicene Creed. It's on page 6 and 7 of the worship folder and will be on the screens. Let's confess together. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our offerings to honor our Lord. Please be seated. And I shall not want Oh my Lord Besides do want you repair my heart I trust in you Of your faithfulness. 
morning we have several um, special prayers. We uh, and certainly include a prayer for Pastor Benz as he deliberates his two calls. We have a prayer of thanksgiving for uh, Karen Stiber um, for the successful surgery she had this last week. And also a prayer of thanks um, for joining Rob and Michelle Dienick and uh, the birth of their bo uh, boy, Henry Allen, this last Friday. And then also a prayer for Matthew McGuire as he's going to be stationed in South Korea. Please stand as we approach our holy God in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are the Lord of the church. And so we ask for your blessings on Pastor Bentz as he deliberates his two calls to continue serving here or to move and serve in Minnesota in Belle Plaine. Lord, bless him. Give him understanding and wisdom and help him to make a decision that is best not only for his ministry, but especially for your kingdom. And Lord, we join Karen Steiber in thanking you for a successful surgery this last week. And now we ask you to bless her with a, a good recovery, a recovery that goes well and quickly, so that she may soon rejoin us in worshiping you here in your house. And also, Lord, we join Rob and, and Michelle Dienick in thanking you for, for the for the baby boy this last Friday, Henry Allen. Keep little Henry and mom safe and, and bring Henry into your kingdom through holy baptism, that every day he walks with you, and not just here, but in eternity as well. And finally, Lord, we ask for your blessings on Matthew McGuire as he uh, is stationed in South Korea for this next, over this next year. Keep him and, and all those who serve in our military safe. Keep him in your care, and not only keep him physically safe, but keep him centered on you, his Lord and his Savior. And now, Lord, hear us as we come to you with our own private prayers. And Lord, also hear us as we join in the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. seated.
Gracious Lord, I firmly am believing. Your boundless love will bless each faithful soul. As from this altar we are here receiving your body and your blood to make us whole. Your body and your blood to make us whole. Lord, I have sinned a thousand times of by thankless thoughts and words and deeds erased. To me your hand of mercy now extending. O oh God, my Savior, I implore your grace. O oh God, my Savior, I implore your grace. Seat me at your table, Lord, as a guest, I surely am the least unclean and fit of worthy deeds unable. My heart prepare for this most holy feast. My heart prepare for this most holy. faithful, loving Savior, you I embrace in faith and holy love. Grant me the strength to show by my behavior a life now hidden in your reign above. A life now hidden in your and benediction this cup you give and take away each ill come and relieve my soul from all affliction from every sigh until my heart is still from every sigh until my heart
please stand and receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Christ eternal, the King of kings. 